What's going on guys? My name is Anthony from Unconventional Aquatics. If you're new here, thank you for checking the video out. If you just subscribe, thanks for subscribing. So you probably clicked this video because you want to know some information about what you can do to buy a fish tank cheaply. Maybe you're just getting started and you don't want to spend a fortune on it. I'm going to show you things that you can do to buy and acquire these items very, very cheaply. Uh, but we have no tank lights on, so let's... Uh, do some magic. Voila, there we go. So I've been working on that magic trick for a while. <laughs> Just. <laughs> so guys, fish tanks. Fish tanks are awesome. And generally when people decide that they want to get a fish tank, it was enabled by something. Maybe you went to a restaurant or to a friend's house who has aquariums and you decided that you want an aquarium. They're freaking awesome. They're relaxing, they're therapeutic, they are great. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna go through, and um, I'm just gonna give you some things that I've learned over time that have saved me so much money. My channel was started based around saving money in this hobby because it really can get very, very expensive. So let's jump right into it. So guys, here's just a quick move the fish room, through the fish room. Um, that is a 20 long with cherry barbs and then our electric blue crayfish who you can see back there. And we have Guppy Paradise. Um, looking very closely guys who have saw my uh, goal to make 1,000 guppies project. There's a, almost a hundred fry in the bottom of this tank. So we're gonna have to get some more tanks rolling for some guppies. Then we have the six foot, 125 gallon. Then we have the 60 gallon mixed community. So guys, and then as you're aware through that door here and through the next door, we have the 1100 gallon pool pond that everybody loves. <laughs> that was a joke. That was for all the pool pond haters. But there's the 1100 gallon pool pond that houses um, what I call the mini monsters, the fish sold at local fish stores that get massive. And that's what the whole purpose of the pool pond is for. By the way, guys, it's just as cool to look at fish from the top down as it is through glass. So don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise or try and sway you out of it, guys. People have been keeping fish in swimming pool ponds for years. It's nothing new. So keep what you want to keep. And then we have a 40 gallon stop, breeder, stop, stop, stop. which no. he's trying to interrupt the video. Not gonna happen, bud. Which houses some uh, haps. I just stop, cleaned the glass, stop, stop, stop. so everything's a little dusty. Yeah, some technical difficulties, guys. Just finally got my new tripod after I broke my other one, and goodness. All right, so how, guys? What do we do? How do we get these tanks cheaply? So my first suggestion, guys, and there's many, many different ways to do things. Like they say, there's a hundred different ways to skin the cat. But if you're getting into the hobby because you want to see if you are going to enjoy the hobby, because you're not gonna know until you get into it. It is an awesome hobby, but it is not for everybody. If you cannot keep up with the maintenance that a fish tank requires, and not all fish tanks are the same. Some fish tanks are extremely easy to take care of, while others are extremely hard just depends on what you are keeping. But the way I do it, and I still do it even with a love for fish keeping, is I never buy an aquarium brand new. Actually, the only aquarium I've ever bought brand new is the 40 gallon breeder, and that was at the Petco $1 per gallon sale. Keep in mind, those are production aquariums, guys. They're not built as good as custom aquariums are, uh, but I've never had an issue with it. But that's a great time to start out with something. Maybe something like a 20 long, guys, when we talk about surface area, okay? 20 long has way more surface area than a standard 20 gallon tank. But a 20 long, a 20 long is a great tank. And look guys, King Claw is out to see us. Let me turn this around. There is King Claw with his little rat pack that he's got with him. 20 longs are awesome, guys. I believe these are great 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 starter tanks you know um, depending on the fish you know it's going to depend on the size tank that you want and that is another huge point guys really decide what kind of fish that you want to keep prior to getting the tank i know that can be a hard decision sometimes especially when you're brand brand new but really do your research and see what's going to fit you maintenance wise um, enjoyability wise what, what what's cool to look at for you keep what makes you happy um, and you will be happy. But a 20 long, I believe is a great starter tank. You can pick up a 20 long from like PetSmart 
for $24, so almost at a dollar per gallon, brand new. So there you go. That's just an example. Dollar per gallon sale. If PetSmart, you can get 20 logs for $24 all day long, brand new. Or my personal favorite, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace is where I buy a lot of my tanks. Don't fall for the traps of tanks that you see like comes with like four hang on the back filters and a bunch of heaters and it's all just thrown in there in this chaotic looking picture. Half the time that crap doesn't even work. So if you're gonna go and you're gonna fall for that and you're gonna buy those package deals, test all that equipment there on the spot. But when you're buying used, make sure you're checking seals, make sure the seals are good. Even honestly, guys, every tank that I buy used that is under 30 gallons or that is over 30 gallons, I reseal immediately whether the seals look good or not. Um, and if obviously under that, if the seal looks bad, I'm going to reseal. Resealing is not hard. There's plenty of videos out there on how to do it. It's not rocket science. It's um, extremely, extremely easy. So you got your tank, right, guys? Now onto the equipment, which can add up, add up, add up. So you're walking down the equipment aisle now and you're looking and you're like, man, this equipment's expensive. These heaters are expensive, but do you actually need a heater? What does your fish require? Maybe you have fish in a room where the temperature is controlled by itself where you don't even have to run heaters. Is that the case in here? Yes and no. See, I only run heaters in one tank in this aquarium and that is this 125 behind me. I keep that tank at 80 degrees because it speeds up the metabolism of my fish. They eat more, they grow faster, yada, yada, yada. But these tanks over here, no heaters. No heaters at all. They stay at 75 degrees. 60 gallon, 75 degrees, no heaters. Well, there is a heater in there. It's just not on, it's not plugged in. But that's my point, guys. Do you actually need a heater? Because if you don't, you're potentially saving 25, 30, 40 dollars right there. And that's a huge saving. Filters, they're so expensive. They're so expensive. Well, how cheap do you want to go with this? Do you really just want to see if you're going to enjoy the hobby? Check out sponge filters. Sponge filters are extremely affordable. They run off of an air pump, which are also very affordable. And they are awesome for growing beneficial bacteria. Only downfall to a sponge filter that all the seasoned fish keepers know is they're just kind of a little bit of an eyesore. Um, in some cases, like in this tank, you can build a scape around it that kind of hides it. Um, in other cases, it's harder to hide. Some people don't care at all. Or like, my 125 or my 60 gallon over here or the 40 breeder out there, we run Sun Sun canister filters. If you've seen any of my past videos, you know I love Sun Sun canister filters. They're great. They're cheap for getting into canisters. They work well. I'm not a huge hang on the back fan, um, but I use them on smaller, smaller tanks. You're actually gonna see here in an upcoming video where we're gonna build a triple 10 gallon rack. We're gonna use some hang on the back filters for some guppies. Not a huge fan. Um, with them on bigger aquariums. I like them just for little small tanks, but hang on the back filters as well. So sponge filters, buy them on Amazon, buy them in packs, dirt cheap. If you wanna go canister filter, if you wanna kinda of get right into it hot and heavy, um, Sun Sun, the Sun Sun line of canister filters is, uh, I say this with confidence, is your best bet. It's the best bang for your buck, guys. It has its flaws like anything else, but they perform greatly. That's the only canister filters I use. I have some fluvals too, but my Sun Suns perform right alongside of my fluvals, no problem. You know how to get your tanks for cheap, potentially, it can happen. Sometimes you gotta wait if you wanna buy them online, go for something maybe a little bit bigger, maybe you wanna start with something around 50 or 60 gallons, maybe you have to wait for that right deal, but wait for it, it's worth it, rather than paying a bunch of money for nothing. You got your filtration figured out, whether you wanna go hang on the back, hang on the backs are fairly cheap, even brand new, but Amazon, Amazon's your best friend, in my opinion, Chewy.com, sponge filters, hang on the back filters, canister filters, you can get that all from there, a heater if you need one. And really, what's the last thing you need besides, you know, lighting? Substrate rocks, where do you get all that? Well, you guys know, my substrate in a lot of my aquariums, black diamond blasting media. These are rocks I pulled straight out of Lake Ontario. Guys, Black Diamond Blast Media is super cheap, tractor supply. Here's a link to that video up here if you've never seen it. It's, um, it's been around the block on YouTube, so check that out if you want to learn more about Black Diamond Blast Media. I've been using it for years. It's awesome. Um, one of those things. Some people hate on it. Generally, the people that hate on it haven't tried it. So check it out, Black Diamond Blast Media. You can get substrates for super, super, super cheap. But make sure you know what you're going to keep. Are you going to grow plants? If you're going to grow plants, you might want to steer more towards a planted tank substrate that's going to better suit those plants to get the most out of the hobby. You want your plants to grow. You want your fish to thrive. So just make sure you're basing all of your decisions 
around the fish that you keep. Provide the environment that they need. And last but not least, guys, lighting. Okay, lighting. You might think, fancy LED lights across this six foot 125, man, it must have cost me a fortune. <laughs> no, it didn't, guys, it didn't. It cost me $50. Two three foot white and blue LEDs. Those are Aquanet LEDs. Aquanet, they're in the link, uh, or they're in my description always. My top money savers, you can find them down in my description. Love Aquanet lights. You can go with something like this that you can build from a hardware store. This, all this simply is, is a garage light fixture in black with LED replacement tubes. So they're not fluorescent tubes, they're actual LED lights, super bright, kind of gives you that, not that crisp white like you get from the white and blues, but it's bright. Again, up here, super small, 10 inch aqua neats. Um, and then down here, we have some Marine Land clip-on lights. If you want to go name brand, um, the Marine Land clip-on lights, I think those are about 25 bucks on Amazon. They're okay, um, they do the job. But Aquanites, Aquanites on the 40 breeder, you know, you can go. There, there, there's, a, there's a ton of different ones, guys. I got videos on Aquanite lights too. I'll leave all that stuff down in the description below so you can go check it out. And I always encourage you to do more research on your own and find out exactly what you think you should be keeping. Don't base it off one video. Go do some research. See what other people have to say. This is what works for me, guys. All this stuff works for me. Remember, Every tank is different. Never compare your tank to somebody else's because you don't know their circumstances. You don't know where they live. You don't know their water quality. A lot of things can change if you're gonna be successful or not in this hobby. So that's how you guys can get equipment for very cheap. Don't get ripped off, guys. Please don't get ripped off online. Sometimes you can score. Somebody's just trying to get rid of a tank and they are practically giving it away. Go ahead and scoop it up. Okay, you can get a bunch of extra equipment. I've scored quite a few times. I got three tanks sitting in the garage right now, empty that are about to get set up. But I appreciate you guys watching, guys. If you would like some more in depth information, maybe I didn't answer something that you were looking for in this video, you can DM me on Instagram, um, Unconventional Aquatics on Instagram. You can send me an email, unconventionalaquatics at gmail.com, um, or you can say something down in the comments, whatever you think. If you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of this video, Hook a brother up and smash that like button. Smash the subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. Haven't done a video of this nature in a while, uh, but I definitely want to get back a little bit more into implementing more how-tos, more unboxings, more product reviews, uh, like my older videos did, and incorporate the newer style of videos as well. Multiple videos per week. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're having a great week. I hope you're having a safe week, and I'll see you next time.